family, and welcome back to another segment here on GEMS Podcast. For those of you that are just joining the community, welcome in. For those seasoned listeners, thank you so much for listening to another segment. With me today is a special guest by the name of Danielle M. Orsino, and her and I are going to spend time talking about how cosplay can help release your writing creativity and Before we get into that, here's more about Danielle. Danielle M. Orsino is a fantasy novelist whose lifelong vision is to create whimsical rams that her readers can escape to. Her compelling word weaving pays homage to a multitude of personal muses from Chris Claremont and George Perez, both famous comic book writers, to Anne Rice, Jim Henson, and Wonder Woman. The creative spark of storytelling has been with Danielle ever since she was a child, but martial arts and her nursing career took center stage into adulthood. Then on on a day like any other, it was reignited during the most unexpected of moments. While treating one of her patients, seeing that they longed for a distraction during their arduous treatment, the floodgates of inspiration soon burst forth. So Danielle took it upon herself to tell them a story, a fantastical narrative that would leave the confines of that IV room's wall and land upon a page. Before she knew it, what started out as an imaginative tale to pass the time turned into a book followed by an entire series, The Birth of Faith, published by Four Horsemen Publications Incorporated with an unwavering passion for cosplay and comics. It was a unanimous decision to place her on the cover of each book in all her Fay cosplay glory. The Birth of Fay also features Loss and a fable chameleon dragon inspired by her fun-loving Yorkie named Carlos. So without further ado, let's welcome the woman behind it all because she is definitely multifaceted and multidimensional, but she loves what she does. So welcome, Danielle. Hi, thank you so much for having me to be here. My my pleasure, Danielle. And now we're going to jump into the connection part of this segment, which is the fun round where the audience gets to know you on in a fun and personal manner. So there's two options we can do here. We could either do a rapid fire 10 question game, emphasis on rapid, or we can do an icebreaker. What are you in the mood for? Let's do an icebreaker. Okie dokie, we're breaking the ice with Danielle. So I want you to share something that you have done in your life that was crazy from the people outside looking in, but it actually built your character or a fun and interesting fact about yourself that no one in your community knows about you, but it gives you that wild card factor. Uh Okay, so here's something that you probably will never find on the internet that nobody really knows. My childhood crush was Bob Hope. I don't know why. (laughs) You can't, I don't know what it is, but when I was a little girl, like maybe around three years old, I had two big crushes, uh, Bob Hope and Cato from the Green Hornet. I told my dad that's who I was going to marry, and I was going to marry both of them. Uh, They, I don't know why, like I said, I had a crush on Bob Hope and Cato that was it those that was who I was going to marry I told my dad that like all the time uh I would see old movies uh with Bob Hope and I just thought he was funny so I thought I needed a funny guy to marry and then I saw the Green Hornet and I thought Cato was the coolest guy in the whole wide world and he had the best car so I told my dad yeah I was gonna marry Bob Hope and Cato so uh you know obviously my taste has changed a lot and I've grown up but yeah those were those were my childhood crushes eventually it developed into Sean Cassidy I don't know what that says about my taste but you know those were my childhood crushes growing up 
Amazing. And thank you for sharing that. Now we are going to jump in to the main part of the segment, which is you making that transition out of nursing into the work that you're doing today. But I also want to let the audience know that it was certain things in your background that prompt you and pushed you into what you're doing now. So I want to, I want you to give us like a overview synopsis of your life, because once we understand the background, then we know why you followed your intuition and et cetera to go into the area that you're in currently. Uh, I was always a comic book superhero geek from when I, obviously from when I was very little, uh, Kato prompting me on uh, a journey. I was a huge fan of Wonder Woman. Linda Carter was my foyer into that superhero world. Yvonne Craig is Batgirl. So I grew up with this knowledge of these incredible women and thinking, I want to be like them. You know, Wonder Woman was the epitome of a woman to me, strong, powerful, but yet compassionate. She could still play with the boys, but maintain a certain amount of femininity. And I thought, I want to be like that. I don't know exactly. You know, I was so little. I just thought, that's what I want to be. So I kept researching and then I, you know, jumped into the world of comics. Uh, You know, growing up, I would go to school with a book report. And my question always was, do I have to read Jane Austen or or can I read the Dark Phoenix saga? (laughs) You know, that was always, can I, can I read this instead? And of course they were always like, no. Um, But I was always looking even in literature for that comic book connection. So it was always playing in my head that, you know, there had to be a superhero. I was always looking to find a comic book connection. I wound up working at uh, Moondogs, a comic book franchise, and trying to jump into that comic book world and looking for comic book connections. So I wound up taking martial arts because that's what you do when you're trying to be a superhero. You figure out the real world connection. I competed in martial arts for years and even did a musical form to the Wonder Woman theme uh, when I was on the WKA 2008 team. And so I was always, I always wanted to be my own superhero and I encourage everyone to do that. Always be your own superhero. And so Wonder Woman was a nurse. What did I do? I became a nurse. Because to me, they're a version of superheroes or today's hero. Yeah, it's a nurse. So I was always a version of a superhero in one way or another, or I strive to be. And I think helping people is a, is a way to do that. Uh, then, like you said in the bio, on a day just like any other, I walked into the IV room and there was a patient I was very close to and he just didn't want to do treatment anymore. And so I told him a story, a story off the top of my head uh, about the Fae. Wasn't reading any Fae books. So I just want to ask a question here just Mm -hmm. for clarification, because Mm -hmm. you said uh, since you since you really love Wonder Woman and you you knew that Wonder Woman was a nurse, it made you become a nurse. But then just dialing back here, since you were Mm -hmm. always into writing and fantasy and et cetera. Why didn't you go down like a professional route that would lead like in theater, drama, writing, or something along those angles versus going to nursing school? Was there any thought around that? Or did you just say, I like Wonder Woman. She's a nurse. I'm going to become a nurse. Like, what was your reasoning behind it? I think when I was working at Moondogs, I was trying to learn the ins and outs of the comic book industry, distribution, things like that. Uh, But there was a little, there was a lot of intimidation, I should say, not a little. There was a lot. At that point, when I was working at Moondogs, uh, Todd McFarlane had just started Image with Jim Lee and all of those guys. He had just broken away from DC and Marvel. There was a schism tanking. It was during the big comic book crash when there was a million variant covers. The industry did not seem stable. And so there was a big, I was scared. I was really scared. Uh, I didn't think my writing was good enough. You know, it was more of just not having the self-confidence and not understanding enough about the industry. I was learning the retail side, but did I really believe I could jump in and write for Wonder Woman? No, I was one of those 
kids and one of those people that when I thought about being Wonder Woman, I wanted to be Wonder Girl. I wanted to be her sidekick. I wanted to be Deborah Winger. I wanted to be, you know, I just wanted to hang around Wonder Woman uh, because I didn't know if I could really be Wonder Woman. So it was a little bit of a self-confidence issue more than anything. Uh, I didn't want to get up as much as I performed in uh, martial arts. I didn't know if I wanted the When you perform in martial arts, when you compete, there's 20 other rings going on. There's not one ring. It's not like boxing where it's just, you know, it's the two boxers and everybody's watching them. In martial arts, there's 20 to 30 other rings going on. You almost don't have to worry about everybody watching you. So if you're somebody who doesn't want all the attention, it's almost a great sport to start with, you know, <laughs> because it's not always about, uh, I had, I've had the honor of performing for uh, Michael J. White, you know, Spawn. Holy cow. That was like the greatest moment of my life. You know, I've had like some comic book bras that were great, but it still wasn't enough for me to think I could get in this industry. So I kind of took all of my writing and put it to the side and all of my creativity and thought I need something stable. I need to be logical about this. And so nursing seemed logical. And then it was like, Hey, Wonder Woman was a nurse too. Cool. That's motivation and go down that road. I mean, I even went as far as making my dress because we all have to wear, uh, well, at least where I graduated from, we have to wear the, the nursing uniform of those of the past. So I went and found a page from like a 1940s Wonder Woman comic and brought it to a dressmaker and was, I need to wear this. And my uniform that I graduated in is a Wonder Woman outfit. This is how crazy I got about it. I mean, my, my teachers were like ready to shoot me when I brought it. I was like, can I wear this? And I pulled the comic out and my Miss Hollander, bless her, looked at me and she went, go ahead. Like she was so defeated at that point with me. She was like, you gonna wear a Wonder Woman dress, Danielle? I'm like, it's technically a nursing uniform with the hat. And she was like, go ahead. She's like, I'm not even gonna fight you anymore. Go right ahead. Amazing. So thank you for adding that clarification. Now we're going to fast forward into that room when um, you had that aha moment where that patient wanted to give up in the IV room and you told him a whimsical story to like just give him hope and something to look forward to because people on the outside looking in whenever someone is going through um a disease or whatever the case may be, you know, you never know where they are mentally. But if you could be that one person that gives them a smile to brighten their day, or you could tell them a story to make them like, forget what they're going through and kind of submerge themselves in something else to make it easier for them to cope through, then that also gives them hope to like, keep on going and fight. I think it's, in my case, I was the IV nurse. I worked weekends, holidays, and then one day a week on a Wednesday, I saw the patients with the doctor. So these patients drift seven days a week for, uh, for the line. So I, was see I saw them all the time. I saw them at their best, their worst, their meh days, whatever. Uh, this patient in particular, we both started, it was my first day, and it was his first day we were walking this path side by side. When I mean the universe put us together, the universe put us together. So I knew very well. And it was just one of those moments where he had transplanted his life from another state to New York, just to undergo treatment because Lyme is just such a misunderstood disease. So I really knew he was at his last straw and he just didn't want to do this anymore and whatever. So I think uh, it was just one of those times where I knew him and I knew his story might help. And I wove him into the tale. I made him one of the characters and it was just one of those. And every sat down, I told him another chapter. I did not think one day I'm going to sit and write the story. It was him encouraging me and saying, you need to go write this down. And I was like, I'm going to PA school. I'm doing all my prereqs. I'm, I'm going to go learn how to, you know, do Restylane and Botox. And I'm going to make, it was another logical, like, I'm going to be logical about this and I'm going to go pump some faces full of Restylane. I ain't got time for this. You know, I am not going to go be an author. I'm not making money that way. I want to make cash. Don't have time. And once again, the universe had another plan and it went a different way, but it just goes to show that sometimes just 
giving someone attention and not trying to make it better is sometimes the key. Sometimes people don't always want to hear, oh, it's going to be okay. And sometimes they just want a distraction and that's it. And that's all you can give. That's a great point there. And I actually just learned something from you. So I'm going to actually take that and apply it to a personal situation (laughs) that I am going through um, as far as the distraction base. So um, now that you, the, now that you change and you didn't go down to be a PA, for those of you listening in, a PA is a physician's assistant, right, Danielle? Yes, correct. Yeah. And um, you went down the author, right? Author route. Um, With this particular patient, once you started launching your series and et cetera, um, if this person is still living, did you share any of your literary works with with him to let him know how much of an inspiration he was to you? Yes, he is doing great. Uh, We still talk and he's waiting for his literary persona to make an appearance in the series, which it will later on. He's got a whole series just about him coming out later. Um, in the Birth of the Succubus series, where he is the inspiration for Agent Graham, who is the protagonist of that series. So he can't wait for that to come out. But yes, he had all the books up to it. Uh, Birth of the Fae, he's, he's read all of them because that was really the spark that inspired all of this. And he's been uh, one of my biggest cheerleaders. And we're still friends. And it's been, oh my gosh, almost eight years since we met. So uh, it's really been a wonderful experience and you just never know who's, whose heart you're going to touch with just a kind word. Amazing. And now my other question is, so now that we know your back end, back, back end story and we know the work that you're doing now, for anyone listening out there in the audience, how can cosplay help them release their writing creativity or just embrace that new chapter? Because sometimes we have so many thoughts in our head and these amazing stories, but kind of like yourself, like you're like, oh, it's that self-confidence that maybe you're lacking when in actuality, if you just kind of push push that to the side and just write without like worrying about like the paradigm shifts or those limiting thoughts or beliefs, then you could really see how your story can truly touch somebody else. So do you have maybe three to five tips that you could share with the audience regarding um, using cosplay and using that to enhance their writing creativity? I think cosplay, it doesn't get enough credit for what it's able to do for confidence. I was cosplaying for a long time. The first time I really cosplayed, I didn't even know it was quote unquote cosplaying, was um, at my first green belt test in Taekwondo because I had to break a board. And I was so nervous about it that what I did was I made my own little Wonder Girl costume. I took a red tank top. I glued the stars just like Deborah Wingers and I put it underneath my uniform because I needed some help. I was so nervous about breaking these boards because if you didn't break, you don't pass. And I wore it underneath that. And I made little bracelets just like Wonder Woman. And I had it underneath my uniform. And that was the first time I was cosplaying. And I would then always have my bracelets on whenever I competed. And that continued with me up through nursing. I always had Wonder Woman bracelets whenever I was having a bad day and I would wear them underneath my uniform. So I think if you have a hero that you know you want to emulate or gives you confidence, wearing a little piece of it is always a great thing because I would think of it in Wonder Woman's cases, the negativity slung off, you know, my bracelets pinging like, you know, the bullets pinging off the bracelets and that the negativity wouldn't hit. Yeah, bing, bing, you know. So I always, and it's funny, even when I write a lot of, my characters have gauntlets and that's my little ode to Wonder Woman. Uh, Now that I've gone to Comic-Con as many times, as much as I want to be Wonder Woman, I make a really good Harley Quinn and Harley Quinn doesn't really care. You know, she's, she does what she wants to do. Uh, She's a bit of a wild card. So when you go to Comic-Con, you can pose how you want to pose. You can act how you want to act. All of that self-consciousness that I usually have goes away. So it, it lets you release a lot of that, those limiting beliefs that you talked about. So I think if you just try it once, you to kind of act out in some of these characters. And you, there's so many movies now and cartoons and things like that you can check out. 
just give it a try. It's think about how you act on uh, at Halloween. You get to do that at Comic Cons, and the cosplay community is so accepting and wonderful. I think that if you just try it once, you'll see how freeing it is. And from there, the creativity flows. For me, uh, I, like I said, I first cosplayed as Wonder Woman, Harley Quinn, Catwoman, Poison Ivy. I, I've done a lot of the DC characters and you embrace their characteristics, good, bad, whatever. I don't, I'm not telling anybody go out and rob a bank. Um, you know, don't act out the villainous side now. Come on, people. You know, just have fun at the cons. But then once I did that, when I was writing, I took some of that and decided, uh, you know, kind of like Edna Mole in The Incredibles, no capes. Would they, would, would some of my characters wear a cape when they fight, things like that. That's how I started cosplaying as my characters. And that helped with my creativity in that sense. Like, what are their costumes like? Because if I'm cosplaying as Wonder Woman, why wouldn't I cosplay as Queen Aurora? My, one of my characters or Desdemona. And so I started doing that and I found that it helped me get in their head headspace because I am not a quote-unquote classically trained author so if not you cosplay as your characters and you find out you can get in their headspace a little bit more and then you just kind of play you're playing dress up you're acting you're playing dress up without feeling silly because you're doing it in the comfort of your own home nobody's judging you that's also the thing about cosplay nobody judges you because when you go to a con there's 50 60 other people walking around doing the same thing Thing. I was just at Heroes Con in Charlotte and you know there's a guy walking around as fat Thor it's hysterical I mean he's walking around he's dragging you know Stormbreaker with him and we're having a good time talking you meet so many wonderful people their ideas and their gender bending gambit I've, I saw three different female gambits walking around from the X-Men who's normally played as a gentleman they're gender bending him. You know, it's, it's great. It's just such a freeing expression that the creativity flows and you get rid of those limiting beliefs or those things that are blocking you. So I, that's why it's really cool. And why wouldn't you want to just let it, let that creativity flow out of you and see, you never know what you're going to get. You really don't. I've had some of my most incredible breakthroughs when I'm cosplaying. And even when I'm cosplaying different characters, because you realize, you know what? This is something one of mine characters would do. You know, like I said, I want to be Wonder Woman. I really do. I'm a little more Harley. I really am. Get the hyenas. Let's go. We're riding out. You know? And I realized one of my other characters, Desdemona, has a little Harley in her waiting to be released. And you start finding things. There's little characters that you're like, you know what? I wouldn't write Harley that way. But I'd like pieces of her for maybe this character. And you start kind of pulling and weaving. And that's how you build. So I, I love that. And thank you for, for sharing that. And then these are the, going to be the last two questions before we jump into the CTA, which is the call to action segment and wind down. So now that you are fully cosplaying and you're writing your books and et cetera, um, did you forego nursing? Are you no longer doing that? I'm no longer nursing. I am just writing now. That's all I'm doing. Uh, which I absolutely love. Do I miss nursing now and then? Uh, possibly, but I was already at the time that I was already kind of planning to go to physician assistant school and I was accepted into programs. So I was kind of already leaving nursing behind at the time. Okay, perfect. And then now with the, the second part of the question is uh, cosplay. I just want I just want you to just share the definition with someone um, just so we could tie everything together because I always like to build foundations. So for any anyone in the audience, they know, okay, cosplaying is, you know, dressing up and assuming the roles and et cetera of, you know, a comic person or someone that you admire within that space. But is there anything else that they should know about cosplay? Cosplaying is dressing up, acting out, role-playing to an extent um, as a character, whether it's anime, um, superheroes, whatever it is. You're just taking on that. A lot of times people make their own stuff. That is a big piece of it. But you know, if you can't make it, don't worry about it or make one little piece of it, whatever it is. But it's making it your own. Whether you want to be, I, I've seen guys dress up as Wonder Woman. I've seen girls dress up as Captain America. 
All it is is taking that superhero or that anime character, whatever it is, and making it your version. It, some people will go for accuracy where every little thing is right. And some people are like, hey, this is my version of it. Take it or leave it, whatever it is. Just get into the community and have fun. Don't make it too serious. Just have a good time and do what you want to do. It's, it's just about having fun. Amazing. And thank you for, for sharing that, Danielle. And now we're going to jump into the CTA, which is the call to action part of the segment. I know you have your book series, so I definitely want you to hold up the book so the audience can see those. Um, but then one other thing that I want you to leave the audience with is your personal call to action for them regarding what you just shared with us on this platform. So go ahead and fire it away. Uh, I think the biggest thing is obviously I'd like everybody to come visit Vale, which is my world in Birth of the Fae. Uh, you can visit me at birthofthefae.com or fourhorsemanpublications.com uh, on Instagram at birth of the Fae under novel and check me out on all about all things Fae. I also have a YouTube channel uh, for uh, Danielle M. Morsino, uh, author. You can check that out and check out all my interviews. Uh, you can also check out on uh, uh, Bookie Call, the Bookie Call app, which is kind of like a Tinder for, and you could pick your favorite next date book, you know, date night book, that kind of thing, which I think is cool. So I'm going to tell you to go and swipe on uh, Locked Out of Heaven, which is my first book. Of course, I'm going to tell you to do that. Uh, you can get it for iOS and Android, which I think is really awesome. And if you're ever thinking of writing, I think it's a good resource because you can check out a lot of great books. But I think the biggest thing is to just get lost in the book. You know, who doesn't want to just kind of forget their troubles and get lost? I think that's um, really important is to not, uh, not take life too seriously right now. A lot of things to upset us. So getting lost in a book, regardless of what book it is. Yes, I'm going to tell you to go pick up my book. Of course, I'm going to tell you that. I mean, you know, let's be serious. But if it's not a fantasy book, go find a mystery book, go find a rom-com, just get lost in a book, go to Audible, go do what you're going to do. Do I think my books are, yeah, of course I do, you know, let's be serious now. But if it's not my book, just don't forget to read or go pick up a comic book. It, it's, it's a great way to forget your troubles for a little bit and just kind of have a nice time. Um, if you're worried about fantasy, I'm a gateway drug. My books are very short fantasy books. Not, you know, they're all of my books are under about 250 pages. A lot of people are very intimidated by fantasy and they think, oh, it's Game of Thrones and uh, it's going to be really complicated and oh, it's going to be long. My books are short. I even have a that's really, really short about dragons. So if you like dragons, um, but just get lost in a book and kind of forget about your troubles. Amazing. And thank you for sharing that, Danielle. And your website is birthofate.com. So audience, that will be in the show notes. And then Danielle, all of your social social media handles are backlinked to birthofate.com, right? Yeah, everything's at birthofate.com. Or uh, yeah, you can check my Instagram out. And there's always a way to find me. If you look at Birth of the Fae, I'm the Fae girl to check out. I'm the Fae queen. Amazing. So audience, once again, uh, you just heard from Danielle M. Orsino, who taught us about how cosplay can help release your writing creativity. And she also, also shared what led her to where she is now. So make sure you support her. Once again, her contact information will be in the show notes. Don't forget to like, comment, follow, and subscribe. We're on 40 plus platforms. So there's a place for everyone to listen to this segment. You could also see the video to this recording by going to our YouTube channel, which is GEMS, G-E-M-S, with Genesis Amaris Kemp. And lastly, but not least, where would I be without my supporters? 
you know I only think about you. No, I am not a singer. I just like to have fun. This podcast is currently ranked in the top 2% globally out of 2.8 million podcasts. And it's thanks to you for supporting the guests that I bring on, as well as the mission and the movement to curate content that is educational, inspirational, and motivational, while we also factor in the need for diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. And my big ASK ask is for brand sponsors because it does take monetary resources to continue the mission and the movement. If you want to partner with me and have your products and services ranked in the top 2% globally with a global reach and impact, head on over to genesisamariskemp.net to find out more info or send me a personalized email to genesisamariskemp at gmail.com to see how we can work together. Because once again, collaboration is not the new competition. It is the way of making synergies. And that's how we could go further and faster when we go together. So until the next segment, peace, love, and lots of blessings. I hope you all have an amazing day and you learned something new.